Hey, hey, everybody. Here we are once again, Country Coder coming at you. Uh, got a lot of exciting work done on uh, Farm Report here. Let's jump into it here. Um, we got login, we got a method of signing up now, uh, Google account, authentication method too. Uh, the sign up, you put in your uh, dis the name you want for a display name, the email you want to use, password, confirm your password, and then you'll uh, be able to hit sign up or sign up with Google. Uh, you can click this hyperlink here to get back to the main login screen. So log in and uh, you come to this report select page. Uh, this is a new feature. So uh, these fields up here will uh, I just realized I can't clear them anymore because it's kind of an end development thing, but uh, these will filter the, the reports based on the values of these fields. Uh, so let's see if we went to like 2020. So there's no report. So if all of these fields are filled and uh, the choices list is empty essentially, or the filtered list is empty, then you have the option to create a new report and go in there and you can add products and existing products will have a price associated with them that will go in there by default or you can change it units and then you add the amount that you put in there hit add oh well that's embarrassing why didn't that work That definitely worked earlier for like all day. Huh. Well, let's see. Oh, I wonder if, no, because it was looking. Oh wait, I guess it'd be in handle add. Oh. No, because I should, oh. Because I did need it there too. Oh, I didn't even have that up. So over, I can get up on the screen. Here we go. Twelve. So <clears throat> right here we got the handle add uh, function, or the function that gets fired when I hit when I hit the add button, submit button for that little line item form. And essentially, I added here today this new row, uh, new unit functionalities. Um, which again, I'll show you in a second. But um, essentially, I added the functionality to add the item if there if it was a new name or unit getting added, um, whether or not it was confirmed to save it to the database or not, but not if it was a regular item. So uh, basically just, or I did, <laughs> just copy this and pasted it down here so that and that's the base then that's adding an else statement to this if right here so if new row name new row unit and again because if it has to make this call i want it to wait to add the item until after the call's done and i know that this way it will work that or, or i'm fairly certain that this way it'll work that way whereas Because yeah, technically it should wait for this fetch to be done regardless before it adds the item, but I don't think that's how it was working previously because it's inside, it's too far nested or something. Definitely not an expert asynchronous programmer, but 
at any rate, let's give that another shot here. So we're back over here. Chemical, add some Roundup, 20 gallons of it. There we go. So, yeah, like I said, uh, uh, let's not do, let's do miscellaneous, sure. Um, so we could like, add a new, uh, let's go drying for an expense line or a line item name. And uh, 2,000, what do we got in here? Nice. So we can add a new unit two of bushels. And I don't even know what a what the usual price for that is, but we'll make it fifty-five cents a bushel. And so then when I hit add now, I get an alert up here that I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says uh, save line item details, basically asking if we want to save these new line item details to the database. I'm gonna hit OK. And then after the call comes back, it adds the line item, and yeah, there it is. And I don't think it will be, oh, yep, I sure did. Oh yeah, because I did put that listener in there. So uh, the expenses listener no, uh, saw, the, saw that update to the miscellaneous expense category, and uh, <clears throat> Updated the uh, updated the client side with our new uh, product name and our new unit. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's adding line items and adding new miscellaneous or new uh, name things, products. Um, another good note uh, is that the products have a default price now. Um, there's currently no way to change it, but yeah, but, but, but yeah, anyway, uh, it's a pretty high level overview as far as this one. Um, so yeah, so let's walk through like, uh, um, my dad, uh, creating a report at the end of the year here. So, um, say for, uh, we're doing the one for the 40. We grew wheat on it in 2024. We don't have that report yet. So we're gonna create a new report. All right now our report's created in the database. We can select it. We got our title up here already. Uh, total shows up, but it, I realized today that that doesn't get updated um, yet. And uh, let's throw some trucking on there too. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so I guess we gotta add a new add a new one. Um, it was actually a really good example. And uh, yep, it was a bin buster crop. I don't know. And uh, yep, by the bushel point. Two four, oops, point two four. Add. Yes, we'll add that to the database. And uh, yeah, so yeah, let's say that's all you needed for that report. Uh, so at that point, we can save. Uh, right now, the only marker we get is in the console log here again you know beta version but uh, that saves it to the database uh, so then we can go back to home here and it might be yep right here there went that pencil <laughs> all right anyway um, so 2024 go back into it we got all of our same line items still um, then the uh, other key function here is that we can print the reports. Um, you see, in, in uh, what it'll print out right now is just the title area with a nice line there, and then the categories 
that are being used. Um, so like the crop insurance, miscellaneous, fertilizer, none of those show up on the print view because there's no line items in them. Uh, but obviously if there were, then they would. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's essentially the uh, uh, overall purpose of the program, uh, the key functionalities. Now, we'll jump over to Farm Report 4.0. Start in the same spot in the login screen. Um, yep, this is it. Uh, no sign up option, obviously no Google option. Uh, there, there's actually no multi-user uh, functionality for this version. Uh, all the data is just dumped into a couple different sections of the uh, database and um, no matter how you log in if you've got if you're logged in you're looking at the same data uh, no matter what account you're using uh, so I can't uh, walk through any of the or I can actually follow through with any of the operations on this version because uh, I don't want to mess up my dad's data <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get logged in here and Is that oh yeah okay what was that oh apparently the home screen is view and edit reports yeah <laughs> uh, so this is how you could go through and select reports that have already been made um, like test 2023 and this is how it looks uh, this is how we add, add the expenses, or the line items. Uh, you choose which category you wanted it to go into, uh, like chemical. Then you choose what unit of measure, quantity, the price. And I just realized that it wasn't even set up to be take floats, so. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I hit add and I probably could, but you know, it does the same sort of deal. It adds the line item to the correct category. Uh, you can still delete line items. Um, still prints out in, I don't know, I might be a little biased, but I like the new version, the new layout better. Uh, but I mean, it definitely worked. Uh, you know, he's been or, you know, deployed in uh, 2021, used it all of 2021, 2022, and started using it here in 2023. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, and that is uh, viewing and editing already made reports. To create a new one, go to this create new report page. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> from these drop downs that uh, I believe show up in a random order every time. Maybe not. They might always be in this order, but either way, they're in the wrong order. Uh, you select your crop. Uh, the uh, name and the year. And there's nothing to stop you from creating the same a report with the same name uh, and overwriting it, anything like that. Um, it's not even actually created until you save so there was a f quite a few times where uh, especially because of the way you have to add options and everything on this one that my dad got uh, quite a, a good ways through building a report and had to switch screens or something and lost everything and it yeah just it wasn't super user friendly he definitely got used to it you know kudos to him for you know, for getting the hang of it. And, you know, even with even with those bugs, even with those annoyances, he still maintained that once he got the hang of it, it was way easier than trying to format it all on Microsoft Word or whatever. Uh, um, I think he's uh, going to really like this new version. Uh, yeah, anyway, enough of that digression. Um, so yeah, and then the same deals here. 
uh, for the line items, and it'll just start building them out uh, as you add the line items. And speaking of line items, uh, notice that like these tags don't have an add new, nor does any of any of these drop downs. That's because that all ha gets done through this add new option page over here. And here's where we decide where, where we're adding a new option. So the heading would be uh, crop landlord or year. Select that, then you can add the new one. And then yeah, after you enter something, you actually see the button, it's not disabled, it just is gone. <laughs> or not there until it's, until there's something in there. Oh goodness, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, and then uh, same thing for expense. Uh, and you actually can't add new options either. I forgot about that too. So you uh, choose the option or the category that you're adding the option to. And then there again, once you type, you can add the new option, but that's just the product name. There's no price or anything attached to it. And uh, same deal with units. You choose the category that you're adjusting the units for. I'm supposed to, huh, apparently it doesn't. <laughs> um, then you check the checkbox for whatever units you want to include in there. Uh, again, it's ugly, but it worked. <laughs> or it does work, I should say. Um, still is, technically. But uh, I think you'll all agree that this is a far sight better. Or, uh, yeah, pretty decent improvement. <laughs> for sure. So the last thing I want to do here before I jump off, is I've got this uh, add new function, add new name functionality uh, in here for, yeah, name. Um, I'm not sure what will happen if, yeah. Um, you, I want the same. Basically, I want the same thing to happen for commodity. Uh, right now, it just console logs add new. Uh, so I want to walk through that with y'all quick. If I can remember where we're at here, let's see. We're in report select. In uh, handle filter change. Okay, if value is equal to add new, then yeah, excuse this. Oh, never mind. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That functionality part's already set up. So uh, right here, I've got a uh, curly braces for the JavaScript expression. Uh, basically, it's checking if filter dot new name is equal to true that's coming from this uh, use state object up here and essentially as we add values to those drop downs uh, the values get transferred here so or get yeah updated here so name george the 40 test whatever Commodity, corn, soybeans, wheat, year, obviously. <laughs> um, so then if basically if that add new choice gets selected, then handle filter change will uh, set whatever property it is to uh, an empty string if there you know, was a value before. And it will set the corresponding boolean here to true which will which essentially toggles the ui from the select drop down to a regular text input and that which copilot helps me out with this with this right here <laughs> um, 
So essentially, I like uh, they each drop down uh, and input for that matter has a an ID. So like name, uh, commodity. So and then the value is the string value of uh, the selection. So add new, George, the forty, except corn, etc. Uh, so basically, this handle filter change. If the value is equal, which e dot target dot value is equal to add new, there's our console log message, and then new filter. Then uh, this with our string concatenation method here, uh, just new underscore, and then plug in the ID or e dot target dot ID. So it'd be name, commodity, uh, and then. Yeah, so we're setting that to true, and then new filter, like I said, new filter dot id set to an empty string, uh, basically so the if there was a previously selected value, it doesn't automatically get put into the text input because obviously if you're wanting to add a new one, then you don't want it to be an existing choice. <laughs> and otherwise, so if if the value is anything other than add new. Then it just update, updates new filter ID with the value and then sets filter new filter. Because we can't in, uh, react, can't update state, use state values directly. We have to use the set method. And yeah, this is just kind of my convention for going about that. There's also the, yeah, I'm not going to get off on that tangent, but, um, but anyway, so we're going to basically or exactly copy this logic uh, that I used up here. Can I, I think I can. I don't know, I don't see why I couldn't. Maybe. GitHub Copilot really is an OG. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, and I don't, I don't even know for sure that that this is how it works, but it sure seems like the longer you use it, or the longer I've used it, or maybe it's just the more complete a project, or the more complete your project starts getting, it really gets a feel for your coding style and starts to adapt and suggest suggestions that you would put in um, the only difference is instead of obviously typing them all out um, you know you got Emmett, Emmett snippets and other shortcuts and stuff but like I mean the correct variable names even the label names that I want um, you know because it I mean this in this case it's pretty easy to see um, I had this one set up already uh, with this uh, function logic up here that was clearly set up to handle both of these, or at least, uh, you know, an input with an ID. Um, yeah, I guess it would. I just, uh, I just had a random thought of what if you typed in add new. I bet it would. <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because that we should be ready to test that anyway. So let's come up here, add new. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> okay, that is kind of neat. We 
done. Technically, you can type them in there. Oh, and that, and that actually reminds me that there is logic for this. But you're not going to be able to see if I'm not on the right page. Uh, yeah, right here. So in this create report, uh, so basically, I, uh, well, yeah, anyway. So yeah, let's say we got test corn uh, year 2025. So we're satisfying all of our requirements to create a new report, but we already have corn in our commodities list. Uh, but when I hit create new report, obviously it creates the report. That's all good. Uh, jump back home and I'm, I'm going to refresh it anyway just to be sure. Um, basically, commodity or corn is still only in here once. That. Is that on the right page still? Corn's only in there once. I don't know if that was on the right page, but it's right screen or not. Um, that is right here. So when create report gets initiated, uh, disable set to true, yeah, console uh, uh, debug message. And then <clears throat> it uh, builds our report off of filter. So the ID is the yeah filter name yeah and then name commodity year total just the initialization data. So then load is the object that we'll send as the body in the fetch request, and the collection we're going into is always our profile that UID, and uh, so we're yeah we're always going to have. A collection that we're going into and we're always going to have a report that we're creating if we're creating a report <laughs> but if profile.names if uh, okay so profile.names that includes filter.name is checking the list of names that comes in the profile document against yeah it's checking to see if the name the value of filter.name is present in profile.names, which is a list of this list of names that comes over. Um, and profile.commodities is this list. <laughs> Since I'm trying to overcomplicate it. Oh, that was the part I needed to add. Huh, glad I went through that. So, uh, so basically, uh, this part of the function, or the part where it actually updates or decides whether or not to update the profile document, which would be which are, uh, which translates to saving the new name and a uh, and or commodity. It's right here. So rather than just checking to see if a uh, new name or a new commodity that's yep this is what I need to change commodity. Yes. Uh, so yeah rather than just checking to see if new name or a new commodity is true it actually checks to see if it is already in the that list, therefore, the database or not. Uh, so, yeah, all of that explanation to get to. Since uh, even though I typed in corn uh, into yes, uh, even though I typed corn into that new area of text field and hit save. Well, yeah, I guess it wouldn't have anyway because 
I'm not telling it to, but <laughs> um, so okay, we'll go test. Add a new commodity, um, sorghum, and I don't think that's how you spell sorghum, but Belcheck knows how to spell sorghum. <laughs> Is that for 2023? So, boom. And there is no alert to ask you if you want to save it or not, basically, because if you're creating a report, then you need to have it in the database. Um, and yeah, the, like I said, anyway. Uh, so we can jump in here, empty report, obviously. And, ooh. Did it not save? Or no, the profile. I need to set up the profile list. Now. Nope, it's definitely not in there. Hmm. No, that still should be right. Load. Profile. Oh, unless it didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. Not a tease. Let's try that again. Uh -uh. Let's make one for DJ. Add new sorghum. And it's been made. Select. Go back home. Refresh. Cross your fingers. Boom! There it is. So, now I can show the example where we're going to add new. I'm going to type in corn again. 2023 so okay so it's got the yeah we're satisfying all the requirements to create a new report the corn is already in our database for a commodity made the report everything's cool there corns in the database once and refresh corn's still only in there once so that was that check statement. So even though new commodity was true, it uh, still didn't send it over to the API. And that is apparent right here. So see right here, beginning execution of save report, there's the sorghum report that we made and it's got this profiles object with commodities and the list, of, the updated list of commodities. And the next time we ran it, save report for DJ corn, corn, all that, you know, same basic report stuff. 
but there is absolutely no profile object. And that's because, or yeah, so I'm only adding the profile object if there's an update, because over here on the on the function side, save report, <clears throat> after it saves the report, uh, looks to see if there is a body.profile field property. Um, and if there is, then it goes through this function to update the profile. If not, or well, yeah, then, or if not, then it just uh, returns success. And if there's an error, then it returns the error. And that, I do believe that's all I got. So with that, thank you guys very much for tuning in, checking it out. And uh, till next time, we'll catch you later.